Hi there, and a warm welcome to the Road to Success with the Lady Maya podcast. This is one podcast with a difference because to us, success is not just the money in your bank account. Success to us is the wealth of your mindset, the wealth of your relationships, the wealth of your experiences and the lessons learned. And of course, because money is important, the wealth you're able to build for yourself, for your family, for the world, and for generations to come. My guest today is Mohamed Majdi, not your average influencer. From Breen Broke Broke, he has built a multi, perhaps million dollar business across multiple countries, starting with his best friend who partnered up with him to start a business in Dubai. Mohamed Majdi's story is one you don't want to miss. It's fast paced, it's exciting, it's filled with nuggets but most importantly, it's filled with authenticity. This is one conversation I want you to enjoy. Listen, my guest is one that, his story, goodness me, like, so he was a speaker at Road to Success last year, and to date, people are still engaging with that piece of content, People are still calling us. They think the event that happened last year is like coming up, which is it is coming up, but yeah. there's a lot of interest in your story. Why do you think that is? First of all, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. It was a very good time. Um, I honestly don't know, but it's it's very nice to have people love you. It's very good. I I think because always whenever I come across people and they just know my story, it's um, it gets to them because I'm young, maybe. And uh, maybe because um, they see themselves in me, because I used to be a brokey in the past, you know? I mean, a brokey is an underestimate. <laughs> underestimate. I used to be very, very, very broke. So I'm very glad that they're happy, and I'm, I'm very happy. Like, I want to see them again very soon, you know? They always text me all the time, yes, and I try my best to support whoever I can, if it's work-related, if it's business-related, or whatever it is, but I'm very happy. My God. I'm getting this. Tell me about, I'm, I'm very curious about your childhood. You uh-huh. know, tell me about childhood. What was that like for you? Okay, so I don't know why, but I don't remember much of my childhood memories, but I'll just recall whatever I can. I mean, I'm, 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 uh, I'm Sudanese, I'm African, I'm half African. And uh, I come from a family of four boys and one sister. We're like four brothers, one sister. I have an elder brother, then comes me, two more brothers and my sister. They are the love of my life. I love them so much. I'll support them with all my life. And of course, my mom and my dad, they're my biggest supporters always. Um, childhood, it was very chaotic. I was born and raised in Dubai. And uh, my father is my role model because uh, since I was a child, whenever I ask something, he's not that person who will be like, take. You know, he will always make me do it the hard way. He will always make me struggle. And I think that was one of the main reasons I'm here today. One of the main reasons why I became who I am today. Like um, anything, if I ever wanted to go out with my friends, he will give me the most minimal money, you know? And uh, in the past, of course, I was very frustrated. Like, why are my friends eating such a lavish meal, but I'm eating a normal meal, you know? But of course, recently, my father told me, this were all lessons for you, you know? So when I became 18 years old, I always wanted to do my own thing. I wanted to make my own money. I do want to always depend on my family, etc., etc. So as uh, I, there was a place called World Trade Center in Dubai, it's a place where there's a lot of events happening. There's a lot of clients happening. So if anyone is watching this and they want to make connections with, with good people, they need to head to World Trade Center. A lot of events happen over there. There's a lot of doctors, businessmen, you know, all those uh, the people who are working over there, their managers are there. You can be in touch with them so they can hire you. Mm-hmm. All of these part-time jobs. Anyway, so I came across this one woman. She was very lovely and uh, we, exchanged our, we exchanged numbers. And I told her that if there's any event, please call me. And I'll make sure I do my best in that event. You wouldn't regret hiring me. I know I'm a fresher. I know I don't have experience, but hire me, you know? And then um, once I remember she called me for an event, which was a three-day event. I did my level best in that event. And What did she hire you for? Okay, so the event was, basically there was an event going on and there were people walking in like customers and they had to, we had to scan their badges. Uh So I was just a scanner. I just had a scanner in my hand and I had to scan. People don't even look at you. Yeah, (laughs) literally. The payment was what? It was like 150 dirham per day which was nothing. I I was standing for 10 hours, but for me, it was good enough, you know? I was appreciating it. I was happy with the 150. So, uh, of course, the 150, 50 goes, I give it to my brothers and my sister. I'm like, you know, exchange this. I give to my mom, and the rest, I just keep it for my next expenses. So I started going from one event to another event to another event to another event, and I started meeting more people, and I started doing a lot of part-time jobs. Like, I literally don't have time anymore. 
So I was studying at the same time. So if I have a class from 1 to 2, I align my job to be at 2.30. So I finish my class and I run to uh, the event. And um, I was, ve- of course, the university that I come from, they all knew that I used to work while I study. So they were very lenient with me paying for my fees and everything. It was perfect, you know. So I was doing all of these jobs, all of these jobs while I'm studying. And at one point, I graduated from university. And uh, But again, this was not my ultimate dream. I never wanted to be an employee, you know. If I was ever an employee, it was just for me to take that second step, third step to becoming something big. So I started working as a construction engineer uh, with a company in Jabal Ali. This is obviously after all the hustle and the part-time jobs and the hundred dirhams and everything. Do you want me to give you some more of what I used to work? <laughs> You're going to get shocked. There is a place called Threads. They supply school uniforms, uh, school uniform to kids for gems. You know gems? Yes, yes, gems yes, education. yes. They have Westminster gems founder, Winchester, Cambridge, and all of this under them. So there is a company called Thread School Uniform. They are the suppliers of the school uniform. Yeah. Okay. So I used to work in that shop for thirty days, from ten a.m. to ten p.m. Kids walk in. I have to check their sizes, give them the shirt. They go to the trial room. They check. They come back. I take it out. I seal it in the package. I give it to them. I go to the cashier. I take the money. I get the invoice, I give it to them, I say thank you, and they go. 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., I used to get 100 dirhams. For a day? Yes, for one day. So I did it for 30 days, and it was, uh, of course, without it, it's like 2,800, 2,700. So it was like a, it's like a summer job kind of thing. So we did it, I did it for one month, and then I worked in uh, Jitex. Jitex, for whoever doesn't know, is the biggest electronic exhibition which happens in Dubai. And I was working with Samsung, and uh, I used to sell mobile phones and tablets and laptops to all the customers that come in. And Jitex is an event which happens in World Trade Center. Yeah. And where did I meet the person who hired me for Jitex? In World Trade Center, you know? That's how it happened. And after Jitex finished, also, yeah, I remember the craziest thing which happened is when COVID hit Dubai, okay? COVID hit Dubai, it was kind of the change for me in uh, my life. It was like the plot twist. So when COVID happened and everyone was stuck at home and everything, I uh, remember I have a friend of mine who's actually not a friend. He's my best friend and my partner. Uh, his father had connection with some guy who supplies sanitizer and masks. So me and uh, Fahad, who's my best friend, we went to him and we told him, you know, give us sanitizers and we'll try to run around and sell those sanitizers to pharmacies and supermarkets. If you guys remember, the, the lockdown used to be by 8 p.m. Yeah. So we used to leave home at like 10 a.m., 11 a.m. with all the masks and everything. And my mom is super pissed at me. She goes like, why are you going out? It's very dangerous and everything. Yeah, you could like, bring back COVID. Yeah, you could bring back COVID. I'm like, mom, I need to make money. You know, what am I going to do? So we used to run around and we made a lot of money from selling wow. sanitizers and masks. A lot of money. And the margins were crazy. All the pharmacies and all the supermarkets in Dubai and Sharjah, they were desperate for masks and sanitizers. It was crazy. So I, I, I will give you an example. One sanitizer, which is like 100 ml, we used to get it from the supplier for 6 dirham and we used to sell it for 18 dirhams. Wow. That's per piece. You know? So the margins were insane. And during COVID, no one would even care about anything. Like even if, even if I charged them... 30 they will pay. They will pay, you know? So according to the... I'm, I'm not trying to scam anyone, but if I go through a big supermarket, I will add a bit of margin. If I'm going to a small supermarket, I'll make it lesser, you know, to accommodate all the... everyone. So it was, it was very helpful and everything. COVID started easing up it, and that's when I got my construction engineering job. So was this like the office job type yeah, job? Yeah, no, it wasn't an office job. I was in the construction sites. Doing what? Like I was a civil engineer. So I was... Uh, okay. Yeah. So that's what you studied. Yeah, that's what I studied. Got it. You know, so my mom told me stop doing part-time jobs, my parents. And they told me, Khalas, you got this degree of civil engineering. Go use it. Might as well use it, <laughs> you know. So I was like, cool. And of course, in Dubai, the biggest two things that pay you, apparently, is either being a doctor or an engineer. Yeah. And that's what you all thought. That's what, that's what every mom thinks. You know, she tells her student, uh, she tells her kid, even either you do engineering What's or up? do medicine. Next. That's it, okay? I didn't do engineering because my mom wanted me. I was always fascinated about towers and sci- skyscrapers and all of this. Anyways, I got a job, and um, how I got the job was very nice because when I was sitting with the, with the person who was interviewing me, my CV says that I speak Arabic, English, and Hindi. Hindi is the Indian language. I speak it fluently. How did you learn that? I have a lot of friends who are Indian and Pakistanis. So, they, uh, so I used to tell them all the time, like, don't speak in any other language except your language, because I wanted to pick it up. It took me two years. And right now I speak it very fluently. Anyway, so it helped me a lot. The guy was asking me, he's like, do you speak the Indian and the Pakistani language? I'm like, yes. He started talking to me in the Desi language, which is the Indian language, and I started responding back to him. He thought I was a liar. I was just uh, writing anything in the CV. So it was very good, and I got hired instantly after he spoke to me in that language. Why? Because UAE, the main three languages are English, Arabic, and that Urdu-Hindi language, if you're an engineer. 
because um, the labor, the project managers, and everyone are mostly from these countries. So it's very easy to communicate with mm-hmm. them. It's very easy to close a deal. It's very easy to get the developer to finish the building faster. Let me just chip in a question yeah. in there. How yeah. important is communication with people, relationship, mm-hmm. and then success and opportunities? Okay. How do, how do we, you know, do you see a link, okay. a very strong link? Okay, so if you ask anyone, about their CV and you tell them to show me their CV, I can guarantee you 99% of the people will always mention my communication skills are a 10 out of 10. Communication skills are the most important thing ever. Because see, when I communicate with you in a very nice way, that's when we bond. Mm. You know, when we bond, that means we're going to escalate to more levels. But if I don't, if the communication levels are not intact and we don't get that bond, then we are going to hate each other. We are not going to work together with each other. So it's, it's, it's... Like the vibe is off. Yeah, the vibe is off. It's going to be very chaotic. Literally two things. Connections, communications. Mm. Those are your two ladders to just go up from, from whatever I'm saying. So what happened to the job? Okay, so I got the job. I started working. Went through my first month. Chaotic. Why? The heat, the running around from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. It's chaotic. You know, it's extremely chaotic. And I was getting a salary of 8,000 dirham per month. It started with six, and then um, I remember I told them that I want to leave the job, so they increased it to seven. <laughs> and I told them again that I want to leave the job, so they made it 8,000. Well, you should have said it like multiple times. Yeah, I should so have, it gets yeah. to like 35. I should have, <laughs> yeah. So they kept increasing it, and I kept getting brainwashed, and I kept staying, you know? Uh, maybe they were seeing something in me, I don't know. But I was doing it, I did it for the first month, second month, I did it for like six, seven months. And at the eighth month, I was like, I can't do this anymore. And when the eighth months came, so COVID took a very high peak, it came down, and again, it went up. When again it went up for the second time, that's when I left this job. So I went up to the HR, I told her, I don't want to continue working, I want to do my own thing. Even though me resigning right now is going to make me a brokey again, but I don't want to do this. I can't be an employee, you know? I want to sit down with my friends, see, I want to brainstorm, I want to come up with a business idea. Like, I want to do something, because at the end of the day, every time I look at my bank account, it doesn't have more than 10,000. Mm. Whatever you do, you know? What does it look like now? <laughs> I wish if I could say it. <laughs> you don't tell me. Tell me afterwards. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, there is no way on earth you can save money by being an employee. It's so hard. It's extremely hard, especially when you want to take care of your family. You want to eat. You want to, I don't know, buy a car. You want to pay for your bills. It's, you want to take your friends on a trip because you did that. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. <laughs> but that's after I started the business. So it was, it's impossible. You know, there is no way on earth you can do it. So I decided to leave the job. I was like, I'm going to leave this job. So I told them, and again, they told me they want to increase my salary. But that's when I said no. Mm-mm. I'm like, Khalas, it's over. I can't do it anymore. Thank you guys so much. And of course, I resigned and I went back home. And that's when COVID hit again. So I remember me and my best friend, um, we sat together and uh, we always brainstorm. All the, he's a brokey just like me. So whatever I'm saying right now implies on him too. So whenever I got a part-time job, I will link him up with it. If he makes a connection with one person, he makes sure I get the connection too. And likewise with me, you know? Because two hands can clap better mm. together. You know, it's always better. Come on. That's, isn't that like an African proverb? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But carry on, please. Yeah. So uh, we kept doing that and everything. And that's when we decided uh, to do something with social media. So back in the days, uh, how companies are marketing, it's either through Google ads, either through Facebook ads, either through YouTube ads. That's how they do it. You know, uh, they record a video, a very nice video of the product. They post it and they boost it through ads. Mm. That's how they do it. And... TikTok was a very new platform back then. It just became new through COVID because in COVID, everyone was trying out every application, you know? So if you logged in back then on TikTok, all you would see is people dancing, people making music, or they're just doing pranks in public, etc. Nothing is being monetized. Mm -hmm. They're not making money out of it. So we thought, why don't we start approaching clients and uh, ask them if we can create a monthly package with them where we can create content for them and post it on TikTok for it to go viral organically. Mm. which is not through ads. How, how, will it go, how will it go viral organically? It's basically if we create this piece of content and it comes to you on your phone, you love it and you enjoy watching it, so you comment and like and share, you know? It's not like I am paying the platform for the video to be forced on your page. It just comes to you organically. So for this to happen, the content, either it has to be funny, it has to be catchy, it has to be very nice, it has to be very good. So my best friend started working with a client called Casa Milano, they're a furniture store, and that same Casa Milano has a sister company called Danube Home. So he was managing Casa Milano, and I was managing Danube Home. You know, he used to create. So we didn't know anything, and they were not paying us anything. It was zero money. No, because I mean, I, it's fine because we didn't know anything about that platform. So you were 
test running on them yeah. and they were sort of test running on you as well? I mean, yeah, it was going both ways. But did you learn anything about social media before doing this? Nothing. I was just going with the flow. Nothing at all. We didn't check anything. You don't understand. We just wanted to make money. We just wanted to just make money. So why did you accept this gig without money? Because, I mean, you're just saying now you yeah. wanted to make so money. So let me tell you. I am a person. Okay, there's a plane. And I want to drive the plane, okay? I want to be a pilot of the plane. Are they going to hire me to become a pilot? Uh-uh. They will never hire me. But what if I go like, I'll pay you guys one million dirham per trip. Just train me for five minutes. And if I'm good, make me do it. You know, at the end of the day, they will make you do it. Casa Milano was not losing anything. In fact, they were getting content out of us. You know, so might as well. It's trial. It's trial and error. If it works out, it works. It doesn't work out. We scrap the content. We go look for a different business idea. So he was doing it with Casa Milano. I was doing it with Danny Pom simultaneously. The first week passed, which and then the second week came. We gave it a, a period of three months. Mm. After three months, we will decide if we failed or not. Uh, we realized that this became successful from the second week of us doing it. You know, because both the clients started going viral together and they started getting customers. You know, like imagine you are a business owner and you hire an immature guy like me who doesn't know anything at all. And suddenly he starts getting customers because of you. Okay. He didn't get those customers from putting any billboards on the roads, which mm. cost you one million dirham per month. Or he didn't get it through ads or anything. He just got it through organic content, which went on TikTok. Okay. Those, the videos which were in Danny home, it was just me talking in the camera. And while I'm talking to the staff of the furniture store, I was cracking some jokes in between. So everyone was commenting and it was nice and funny, you know? And uh, so, for example, if they have a chair that they want to sell it, I'll sit on the chair and I'll talk and I'll be doing like this with my leg and I'll just do it like this and I'll talk. I'll basically, I'll make it something catchy, you know? Like I wouldn't just put the chair and be like, yo guys, this is for 20 that I'm buying it or leave it, you know? No one is going to watch that. It worked out very well. One, uh, at that point, we had two clients. People started contacting the owners of those two stores. Who's doing it for you? He's like, this guy and this guy, you know? Started contacting us. We got three, we got four. We got five, we got six, we got then seven. Then you started charging? We, uh, yeah, uh, 25 videos mm. per month for 3,000 dirham. Today we charge minimum, minimum 15,000 for 15 videos. So 1,000 per video? 1,000 dirham per video. How many of those videos go viral? See, that we don't guarantee, yeah. but we tell you, look at our client Track work. Record. Yeah, because if anyone tells you I can make you viral, pay me, I'll make he's lying. Because mm. we don't know how it will work. We don't know if people will love the content. no. We don't know, like you don't know anything. You're just betting towards an algorithm. Mm. I'll, give you, I'll give you a more simpler example. Uh, you have a company? Yeah. Okay, so uh, you contacted Sheikh Zayed Road, for example. You told them there is a billboard next to Hassa Street. I want to put my company in there. Do they tell you I'm going to get you sales out of it? Mm-mm. No, but they can promise you that I'm going to have 10,000 cars. People passing by. Yeah, I'm going to have 10,000 cars pass by every day, you know? But they will never promise you sales. They will never promise you anything. So similarly with that, we will promise you that your videos will get good views and everything, but we can never promise you sales. Mm. You know, that's how it works. But if anyone tells you, I'm going to get you sales, I'm going to make you go viral, he's lying. How did you, how did you come up with the name K9 Unit? When, when I first saw K9 Unit, I thought maybe they sell dogs or it's like, because yeah. K9, you know, like yeah. dog. Yeah. Do you love dogs? Okay. So uh, it's not about loving dogs or anything. I don't have my phone on me, but I would have showed you. We have a group on WhatsApp. It's called Dogs. Like okay. actual dogs? It just says dogs, D-O-G-S. <laughs> and the reason being is, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but all the Arabic families and the Indian families and the Pakistani families, when the mother gets pissed at her son, she mm. gets angry, she tells him, Kalb, ya kalb ta'al. You dog. You dog, come here. <laughs> you know? They say it like that. Or kutta. Kutta is dog in the Indian language. You know, they say it like that. And the other way of it is, um, canine are the police dogs. Uh, yeah. The ones mm-hmm. who uh, catch the drugs in the yeah. airport and all yeah. of this stuff. So canine dogs, they work nonstop, 24-7. They're always working. So when we wanted to make the company name, we decided to make it Canine Unit because canine are the elite form of dogs. Mm. And we are the elite form of those dogs who okay. can make it just I work out. you're working with. Yeah. <laughs> so we made it canine and then we made it unit because we're a unity. That's amazing. That was the, that was the whole uh, point behind this name. And of course, everyone who's working in canine currently, 50% or I would say 60% of them are my friends, my best friends, my brothers. Because they were all with us um, during the brokey phase and everything, and they're now all working with us right now. I mean, and, and when we see your social, we see how you move in a pack. I mean, you showed up today alone. I'm yeah. like, it is yeah. rare to yeah. see you alone because you move in a pack yeah. of brothers. Yeah. You know, and let's go back to business models. Mm-hmm. Like some people will tell you, listen, separate family yeah. from business yes. because they will mess you up. Yes. But here you're talking about building this 
company, mm -hmm. but with your brothers, with yeah. your friends, with your family. Yeah. Why do you think it's working for you? Okay, so I would strongly, strongly, strongly recommend if anyone wants to start a company, don't start it with your friends at all. But you started with friends. Okay, I'll tell you why I did it or, or, or what happened in my route. So it's, it's, it can, if you start a company with your friends, it can either be perfect or terrible. Mm. That's how it will be. Uh, because um, at the end of the day, if one of your friends, they mess up the work, you scream at them, it will just cause... Friction. Um, yeah, it will cause a lot of uh, heat between those two. And then you lose the friend, you lose the money, yeah. you lose the business. Yeah. But with me, if you see me outside on the road or in the mall or whatever, I'm a different person. And inside the office, I'm a complete different person. And my friends who are working with me right now, they have adapted to this. They know this perfectly. Like they are very happy with it. So when I started, of course, it was very hard, you know. Uh, if I tell them to do this or do that, they will, you know, laugh and blah, blah, blah. It was, it was very chaotic. It was extremely hard to get them on track. But I got them on track at one point or the other. And um, right now, at this point, if I come inside the office and I see something going wrong, I will tell them and they will immediately do Adjust. it. Adjust. Yes. They so will now they've been able to separate business from friendship. Yes, they will never do anything. They will never, like, they will never, like, uh, decrease the respect which we have between each other at all. But the second we step out of the office, they kick my ass. It's fine. You know, <laughs> it's all good. And they will do it. They do it. You know, when we are outside, when we're chilling, I'm not their boss. I'm no one. But when we are in the office, everything is different. The environment goes different. So your business is in multiple countries. But before we get to that, yeah. you grew up in Dubai. Yes. You were a brokey yes. in Dubai. Yes. And now you are someone who owns a business that is serving multiple clients yes. in multiple countries. Yes. You can afford to travel as much as you want. Yeah. You were telling me just now that yeah. you've traveled 18 countries yeah. between yeah. the last road to success yeah. Yeah. and this one. Yeah. That is exciting. Mm -hmm. Now flip this story. You mm -hmm. see other people from other countries who come to Dubai to make it. Mm -hmm. What would you tell these people about Dubai and mm -hmm. making it in Dubai? Okay, so if I'm going to talk from experience, I'm going to say this one famous sentence which has went viral recently that Dubai is the easiest place to become a millionaire. It's literally the easiest place. Why is it the easiest place? Because they made the infrastructure very easy for you. They made everything very easy for you to an extent where um, a person like me can go from being nothing to something in a span of less than two years. Then I believe that Dubai is actually the easiest place to make money. I'll tell you, I'll give you more reasons. There is a lot of jobs that can be done in Dubai if you dig in. It's the easiest. Like it's um, The thing is, people would never get the image that I'm trying to deliver, but it's very, very easy. But the way you should make it is you need to create something unique. That's it. So if you see people opening a restaurant, like for example, if you go to Karama, you know Karama, right? In yeah. Dubai, there is a lot of restaurants over there. That doesn't mean you should open a restaurant. Never open a restaurant in Karama, ever. Because it will be very hard for you to compete with everyone. And even if you make it, it will take you forever. So you have to create something unique, like extremely unique. I've said this once before. If you wanna, if you wanna create something unique, which is related to a restaurant, open a basketball court and put a restaurant inside. There is no one who did it in Dubai, but it's a very unique idea. Why can't, why can't someone do it? Mm. You know? If Let anybody does it, please make sure the 10%, <laughs> right, comes yeah, to us. Yeah, so it's, it's, it, it becomes very unique. And these things, they go viral. Like yeah. if you come up in a camera and you say, I have a basketball court with a restaurant inside it, it will go viral. Mm. You know, people be like, what the hell is going on? And they'll start digging in more to this topic. But How? if you... But, yeah. If you, yeah, but if you say, I just opened a restaurant in Karama, no one is going to care. Yeah. You know? How important is social media for success in Dubai? Extremely important. Extremely important. Some of my clients started with us uh, two years ago. Um, with, uh, for example, I'll give you an example. He's a very good, dear friend of mine. His name is Zuhib. He's a real estate broker. He's known by a realtor on a Harley. He was one of our first real estate agents who has worked with us and believed in us, which was two years ago. When he started working with us, I was the one who went and met him. Like, I had a sales meeting with him. I was pitching him about us and what we do. From the time I met him, it took us three weeks to close the deal with him. He was very scared, and uh, he had, pro of course, he wasn't making a lot of money to invest. Back in the days, we used to charge, what, 6,000 dirham per month. So it was three, and we started going up slowly at 6,000. So for him to pay 6,000 per month was, of course, a big thing, and he had to make sure that he gets something out of it, Okay. But because of social media, this guy today, he has a team and he has an office. He has a company. And he's one of the, mo the most known real estate brokers in UAE because of social media. Yeah. His name is Zuhib, and I'm sure he's going to be watching this. So big shout out to That's him. That's exciting. Yeah. So for some people, 
they do affirmations. Yeah. For some people, they have coaches, mm -hmm. something that helps them along. Because, mm -hmm. as you know, success also has to do with mindset. Yeah, what for do sure. You, what do you do? Uh, what exactly do you think I do, if I may ask you? Listen, that's why I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no idea. <laughs> like... Are you trying to say, like, what is the mindset that I follow or what do... So it's so for some people, they wake up in the morning and they look at the mirror and say, you can do this. Like, whenever they have fear, doubt, anxiety, anything, mm -hmm. they try to boost themselves, right? Yeah. To say, you can do this. Believe in yourself. Build mm -hmm. a confidence. For some people, they have, like, a business coach, a success coach yeah. that helps them say, hey, do this, do this, do this. Yeah. Do, you, do you do coaching? Do you do affirmations? Do you do mantra? Do you mm -hmm. wake up in the morning and say, I am mm -hmm. Muhammad Mashi. Mm -hmm. I can't do this. Mm -hmm. oh, what do you do? Okay, I, I don't do any of this. I, I believe that your success coach is you. Okay, it's, 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 it's basically you in the mirror, obviously. See, I'm going to tell you something. There is, like... No one, I, this is what I believe. If you don't have it inside you, you don't have the motivation, you don't have the goal, if you don't have the dream, no success coach can help you, okay? Like, I cannot just take a person from the street who doesn't care, like, he's happy with whatever he's getting, and I take him to the success coach and tell him to make him a millionaire. You need to have, I don't know, you need to have a dream. Like, if you wake up today morning, and you're very hungry, and you don't have money, you will have to end up looking for food and eating, otherwise you're going to die. And you'll end up looking for food, yeah? Mm. Similarly, if you wake up in the morning and you go like, I need to be a millionaire in one month you will have to end up doing it regardless of what route you take you will have to end up doing it i'll give you a better example i am sitting in charge right now and i want to go to abu dhabi okay i don't know anything about the routes or anything i will have to start thinking that i my destination is abu dhabi i need to go to abu dhabi so first i'm going to take muhammad bin zaid road which is e311 there is a lot of traffic over there there is an accident boom i'll take a u-turn come back i start looking at more roads there's sheikh zaid road i'll drive towards sheikh zaid road there is another accident u-turn come back I will go to Emirates Road, which is E611. That's empty. It takes me to my destination. So it's, it's, you just need to know which route to take and what's your destination. So it's important to have focus and vision. That's it. Literally, that's it. Just if you want to become a millionaire, you will become a millionaire. If you want to become a billionaire, you will become a billionaire. Are you a millionaire now? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so now that you're here, yeah. you're definitely not a brokey. Yeah. What is the next big vision? Okay, so... The next thing I want to do is, first of all, I want to spread Canaan Unit all over the world. That's the, as starters, because I believe that we can uh, help uh, people and their businesses go up in the sky. Because when we started Canaan in Saudi Arabia and in uh, Qatar, it's, we started in Qatar before Saudi Arabia. I remember our client, who was, who was our first client in Qatar, he contacted us, he sent us an email, and that was our first exposure to a country which is outside Dubai. You know, We had a Zoom call with the client, and uh, he agreed to work with us. And uh, he's like, uh, I remember he was telling us these exact words. You guys are in a different country, but uh, I need to work with you guys because we don't have anyone who does similar stuff in Qatar. You know, there is marketing agencies, but all they will do is HD content, uh, podcast, stuff like this. But no one does this content creation, this mm. short form mm. content, which is less than 30 seconds. Uh, that fun content, you know. Anyways, he signed up with us and we traveled. I remember me and my partner, we were the ones who traveled to do the content because we wanted it to be perfect. So he can continue working with us. So when we went over there, we were looking at the country and everything. Literally, there is no business in Qatar which has a proper, successful TikTok account. You know? At all. Literally at all. So when we started working with him, today the page is sitting on half a million followers. We started working with him eight months ago or nine months ago. He was on zero followers. Today he has half a million people watching him. This client, they supply, um, you know, outside the villa, there is like a, a majlis. You know what a majlis yeah, is? Yeah. So they supply majlis, but uh, a smart majlis where you can open the window with a remote, mm. open the door with a remote, open the roof with a remote. You know, it was very fancy. So our first video has got 2.2 million views. It's a video that I'm talking in. If, any, if you guys want to see it, it goes to Zahabi International on TikTok. It's there. And uh, it worked out very well. And every single business in Qatar, I think there is around 15 businesses in Qatar, they started looking at the content of this page and they started copying it. Literally everyone. And of course, when the video went viral, we started getting a lot of inquiries. We got the second client, third client, fourth client, and so on. And same thing happened with Saudi Arabia. That's amazing. Yeah. So now the plan is, I want to go to another countries and do it. Do you ever struggle with like disappointment? Has anybody ever said no to you? Has anybody ever yeah. said, yeah. you're not good enough? In the beginning, yes. In the beginning, we got kicked out a lot of times. And how did you manage that? Just take it. We just take it and we continue the day, you know? Like, as I told you, if you have that goal, that, that, that will never be a disappointment for you. In fact, you'll just smile and you'll go out. Uh, we used to walk into a lot of clients and we used to... I, I used to personally walk in, park the car, walk in, 
I tell the client, this is me, this is what I do, like, get out of here. You know, it happened a lot of times. I even met a guy recently who told me to get out of here and he met me and he wanted to take a picture with me. Did you take the picture? Yes, I did. Because I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to um, have... Be petty. Yes. <laughs> like, خلص, whatever, you know, it's fine. And plus, I don't blame them. It's a random guy who's walking in who has no experience in life, who has nothing, who just wants to try an idea on you guys. I mean, I don't blame them. Whoever believed in us, believed in us back then. And I'm very grateful for them. And today, here we are, you know. But again, disappointments, they didn't do anything to me uh, because um, at the end of the day, you want to reach the goal. And as I told you, if there is an accident, you take a U-turn and you use a different route. That's amazing. You don't stop on the road and call it a day. You so have to reach the destination. Now that you're here, what is success to you? <sighs> For me, success is seeing my mom happy uh, because um, the way I treat her and the way I make sure that whatever she needs, she gets it. That's literally the biggest success for me. And uh, being able to get my brothers and my sister whatever they want is success to me. And um, again, the other part of success is um, me and my best friend being broke and being here today is like a big achievement. Uh, he's my brother and I love him a lot. And uh, we're going to keep doing this for the rest of our lives. So this is all success to me. me. Me being able to see my family happy, me being able to see my friends happy is success to me, you know? Me being able to talk in front of people and uh, people loving me for who I am. And uh, it's, it's, just, it's just all success to me. You know, when people come and tell me, Majdi, you were this and you became this and all of that. They're like from behind their head, they're like, wow, and everything. But for me, it's very emotional. And, and I always pray to God that whoever is struggling and whoever is trying, I hope they make it once in life. You know, I really hope they all make it. And there is a saying in Arabic which says, لكل مجتهد النصيب, which always works out, which means to whoever struggles will succeed. Okay, like if you struggle, you will succeed, you know. So that is, there is a different, a lot of meanings for success. So I'm, I'm very happy. You Let's know? talk about opportunities because yeah. I know that you probably see some opportunities that other people don't see. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, that's an opportunity. But now you're too busy. You're yeah. too, too rich to <laughs> do those things. No, no, no. But no. maybe someone's watching, they're in Dubai or want to come to Dubai mm -hmm. and they're wondering, what can I do? What, you mm -hmm. know. What are low-hanging fruits mm -hmm. that they can easily pick yeah. and, and get on the ground? Okay. What would you suggest? Like if they wanted to open a business idea, for example? Yeah, just simple. You know, you started from, you know, stamping yeah. IDs, scanning IDs. Yeah, yeah. You started from there, but as you elevated, now mm -hmm. you started doing content. Mm -hmm. But what are some other business ideas, small business ideas that you think people can start with? Okay, so if, if someone wants to start a business idea... Uh, if, if it's a small business idea, I'm sure that person doesn't have enough money, first of all, to even start the business, right? So uh, I would strongly suggest that work as an employee for a couple of months first, you know? Why do, you, why do I want you to work as an employee? It's because, first of all, you'll gather some experience, some connections, some, like, if your communication skills is a two, it will, at the end of the day, it will become a six. After you work, you will make money and you'll start saving money. Uh, this, like, if I say I don't like being an employee, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be an employee. You have to be an employee for a couple of, maybe one year, two years, depending on your luck, or when you um, think you found the right thing, but you need to be an employee for some period of time. And then after that, for the business idea, you need to do something that you love. If you don't do something that you love, you will never succeed in it, you know? Like if there is, for example, you know drop shipping, right? Yes. Anyone who's doing drop shipping, majority of the people who are doing drop shipping are making money. But if you don't enjoy it, then you are not going to make money out of it. You will... Um, the reason why I'm saying you have to enjoy it is because if you wake up in the morning and you enjoy something you do, you will do it. Like, you will just wake up and do it, you know? Like, if a friend calls you, he goes, like, let's go for lunch. You'll be like, no, I don't want to go for lunch. I'm already doing something I'm enjoying, you know? But if you're not enjoying that thing, you will just waste time and go. So if you are someone who is a bit young, I strongly recommend do drop shipping First, learn about it. And if you like it, do it. I remember, like, what, three months ago, I was just bored and I, I didn't know anything about drop shipping. Three months ago, I went on YouTube. I had, like, a spare one hour. I started learning about drop shipping. And I did dropshipping for a week and I made $3,000 in one week. One week? Yeah. So what dropshipping is, is basically you need to find a product, which is... Uh, At a small price. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's less price or it can be like, it's a good product, you know, that can... Uh, which product was it? So that, I think I have one hour after this conversation. I wish if I could say. Maybe I'll tell you after the podcast, <laughs> but not right now. Because the product is very good. You don't good. want to saturate yeah, the market. Not, yeah, but not a lot of people know about it. So you need to find a very, very, very unique product. And the best thing about dropshipping is you don't need to have a storage room. You don't need to get 10,000 products. You don't need to have a shop. You just get the product, make a website, list the product. And if someone purchases it, that supplier supplies the product. And you just make your uh, commission, yeah. the margin, you know. 
and the 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 last step of selling that product is basically doing marketing for it so you create a tiktok account or just make a nice video out of it and post it on facebook boost a lot of money on ads on it it will make you the money back so dropping drop shipping if you learn about it it can make you good money but you need to be consistent if you want to make money cuz i did it for uh, three weeks but in the first day second day third day nothing fourth day fifth day the first week nothing i i got the money uh, i made money when it was the third week in the last two days of the third week awesome. i got the 3000 and i stopped doing it i just wanted to prove to myself that i could do that it, you can do it. Yeah, yeah and i did it and i stopped it so that means that if you stopped like the social media type business today mm-hmm. you you would be willing to do something else see i got this question before if someone told me that tomorrow we just take your bank account we take your cars we take your company we take everything from you what are you going to do i i tell them like if you told this to the past majdi okay he's going to struggle again but today i know there are so many ways of making money and it wouldn't take me more than 3 4 months to just get on my feet again because awesome. i know how to do it like um, if you learn you will know how to do it it's just like a football player who becomes a professional football player you take him from a very good team and you put him in a bad team he will make the bad team a good team because he's a good player you know that's how it works quick tips on building our social media making it making it good whether it's tiktok or instagram okay. quick tips okay so um, I'm not going to share exclusive tips because that's going to bring my business down. But uh, I would strongly recommend if you're doing Facebook or Instagram or Google or YouTube, stop all of this. Just create content on TikTok. That's the only thing that you can do. And if you want and when you are creating content on TikTok, don't create content which is very which you see all the time or which is um, which is ads like which looks like an advertisement. When you watch YouTube, do you see that three, two, one? and then skip ad. Yes. Don't you wait desperately for that skip <sighs> ad? Yeah. Similarly, you don't want to create something like this for people to be like, "Oh, I want to skip this. I don't want to watch it." You need to create something that people will not think it's an ad at all. It will be indirect. At the end of the day, you just want to give it brand awareness and uh, in a very indirect way sell it to the customer without telling without forcing him to buy it, you know? And that's that's what we know how to do best. So, get onto TikTok. It can change your life. I mean, I'm an example right here. Hashtag TikTok. #strategy Hasht- Do we really need hashtags to take? No, you don't. Hashtags classifies your content. It doesn't make your content go viral. So if you if you post a video about uh, a shawarma and you press hashtag #shawarma tomorrow when someone searches shawarma it just shows your video. But it doesn't make your video go viral. It just classifies your content. Awesome. Yeah, but use do the right editing, use the right text and um Yeah, I think that's about it. You wanted to say something <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. you were one of our amazing speakers at yeah. Road to Success. Yeah. September mm-hmm. 2022. Tell mm-hmm. me about that experience. When I invited you, I know I was bugging you cuz yeah, I was like, yeah. "Come, come, come." But yeah. you said you would come mm-hmm. and you did show up. I want to know what what were your thoughts before you came to the event and what you what your impressions were mm-hmm. on that day. Okay, so the RTSS event of course it was it was a very very good time. I'm very um, grateful that I was invited there. But just a fun fact, I have not practiced a single word before coming to the event. Everything you heard over there came out of my heart. Nothing was practiced. In fact, I was uh, sitting outside with my friends and they were telling me, "Why didn't you practice?" I'm like, "Bro, I don't know." And we all started panicking together. Even though I always do it all the time. I'm always called to podcast and I just freestyle everything that I say. Similarly when I was just sitting right there my heart is racing and of course my heart races every single time every time the camera opens in front of me and I want to shoot content for a client my heart starts racing and after three seconds everything goes away and I start talking you know so my heart was extremely racing and then I got called in the stage I started talking for three seconds everything started coming after that it just it's just all freestyle and it just all happened but of course it was an amazing experience I'll give it a 10 out of 10 yay yeah it and was very good of course we're having you back yeah what Inshallah. What would you be sharing? Do you know yet? Okay, so again, I am going to come without preparing anything, but of course, I'm just every time I do a talk, I try to make 80% majority of it. I want to help people learn something. I don't want to talk about myself so much, you know? It's not going to benefit anyone. But people will be like, "Wow, etc." It's okay, whatever. But I want maybe to share some tips that can help someone sitting in the crowd to um uh hopefully become successful like who I am. Um just share a few points here and there that can help people honestly. I will try to make my 80% of the talk related to that and then the other 20% is how I started and how I ended up here. And answer questions. Yeah, I will I will I will answer questions and share and the drop shipping secrets. Hopefully, <laughs> yes. I will. I will. <laughs> Majdi, at this point, we like to say cheers for sure to your success. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fix that at some point. <laughs> 
That was an amazing conversation. We matched the, and of course, you can always do what you need to do with this video. Watch, learn, and share. Mm -hmm. See you in the next video. Thank you, guys.